Hello and welcome to this ZBrush uh, tutorial, or I guess it's more of a guide or uh, a walkthrough of rock sculpting. I'm going to be sculpting rocks today, showing you a few techniques on how to, uh, well, the techniques I use to get a uh, rock like sculpture. And the first thing I'll do is open up a sphere and turn off symmetry, which I do by pressing X. And uh, I always have some reference on my left monitor here just to get a feel for a, for a rock, the kind of rock you want. That's the first thing you want to do. And start off with the move brush. And just uh, try to get the general shape of the rock that you have on your reference. And reference is so important here. It's uh, very unlike anything else. You really need some reference to get rocks right. Um, well, of course, you don't have to have reference, but it, it sure will end up a lot better uh, if you do. Now, there are so many different types of rocks, so I guess you can kind of get away with just faking it a little bit, and sometimes making a bit of a fantastical rock will help help you get to the final result. So something like this, I'm going to turn off the floor here, because it's distracting me. And after I kind of have the general shape, I'm going to pull it out a little bit. There. I go over to the Trim Dynamic Brush, and I just quickly like make some planes not important exactly where you put them you're just trying to flatten out some surfaces because uh, I'm going to use the clay to no, the clay build up brush later to build up shapes and stuff but for now I just want to make it a bit more angled so I'm just uh, nudging off all this super soft uh, edges and stuff I think I want a different material as well. This one I like better. So this top here is really smooth. So I'll just nudge it like that. And here on the corner. Right, there we go. And then I go over to the clay buildup brush and uh, generally pick a few spots, turn the focal shift like way up or down, I guess, into the negatives to get some really sharp edges. And what I'll do then is that I'll kind of make little clumps everywhere. Depends on your rock. Smooth them a little bit. like that should be good and I think I want to rotate this rock about 90 degrees or so go back to the move brush readjust the shapes that I've made Using the damn standard. 
Oops. Let's make some lines. Mm, don't make too many. So we've got some kind of rocky, clumpy shape. Lumpy, clumpy. Now this is more of an uh, like a basic rock tutorial. There's really lots of um, you can go really specific about rock creation and make some rocks that are super super duper detailed. But I'm just going to show the f a fast technique. So when you got some kind of weird shape that you like. Um, we go over into Dynamesh. And just Dynamesh the rock for now. Get rid of all the faceting with the smooth brush. And generally just give it some smooth smoothing to get rid of all these artifacts or what you might call it. Now you see this little, I mean, it might be hard to see in the compression, but there's these little dots here, here and there and there, here and around here. It's the connection points here, there's like little poles. There's a special kind of smoothing you can do. Even You see when I smooth with the regular smooth, it gets a little better, but it never really goes away. If you hold shift, start smoothing, then release shift while still smoothing, See, it, it gets rid of those a lot better. Um, it's like an alternative smoothing, if you will. Although not so important for rock sculpting. <laughs> so I should stay on topic. And now that I have my rocky shape, uh, this is when I go and get these special brushes that I use for rock sculpting. Um, I go into the light box to brush, and I go into... Uh, trim and I picked the trim smooth border it's the furthest one down and it is really good at like just cutting corners and making some really sharp jaggies that might feel a bit rock like So that's what I want you to start doing, is just dig in some rocky shapes, uh, remesh as much as you feel, and maybe increasing the resolution. Having a low resolution when you're making a rock is not really all that important, to be honest. That's At least that's my opinion. Uh, it's, not, it's not so fidgety and like, you don't need to be as precise as you are with uh, characters and stuff, so just making sure you have nice, uh, a bunch of topology to work with is often a good idea when you're making a rock. So you can switch between this one and the regular tr uh, trim dynamic. Uh, because the trim dynamic will help you make some rounder shapes, like if you want some curvature some places. Not all rocks have like flat, cracked surfaces, but maybe if you want some rounder surfaces, you can use the trim dynamic. And once you've already um, gotten the brush from the special brushes in the light box, it'll show up at the bottom of your uh, brush palette, so you don't need to get it again for later can just open it up and get the furthest one down. And uh, if you don't save it though, it'll disappear when you start your ZBrush again, so you're going to have to get it again, unless you put it in your startup folder, which will load it on startup. I'll make sure it loads on startup. And sometimes you can put an alpha in here, like a, a square alpha. Uh, 
it'll turn the brush into a, a similar brush that I like to use, which is called a mallet brush, um, which I might use, uh, but I'm not. Sh I don't think I don't think it's all that different. So, um, well, I'm gonna get it just to show you. It's in Lightbox brushes, and under mallet there are a bunch of different ones. And I think I use the fast too usually. Yeah, it's a bit different because it won't mess up your model all that much. It'll kind of just keep to the normal that you started with, and it won't. Uh... Well, it'll push down a little bit, and then it'll keep to the normal. It seems. Yeah, and it already comes with the uh, alpha in place. And it's really good for making like broken rock, you know, like the kind of rock you get uh, when when you do construction and stuff, and you use explosives to get the rocks off. It's really nice for that. And remember to keep like re-resing your model. Uh, because these brushes are really work well when you have lots of topology to work with. And this one will also stay at the bottom, so if you ever want to go back, you just switch back to the other one. And just bumping up the surface a bit. Being you kinda gotta be a bit brutal, you know, like you're hacking at it with a with a hammer, trying to make some. Maybe we can use a different one. Maybe we can use a circular one. No, it makes very unnatural shapes, in my opinion. Maybe one of these could be useful. Not the cracks. Let's try this one. I guess it gives you some kind of fakeish detailing, but it's not really necessary. I like my square. I'm gonna stick with this square. So we just work around the model, trying to make good looking shapes everywhere. Now, sometimes you want to have variants, like you want to have it be rocky in some places, and others you want it to be more smooth. And that's okay, like, that's really smart actually. Because then your, your rock can be used in many different in ways, like you can rotate it around in the world, depending on what kind of world you're making. Uh, it's nice to have like a bunch of very useful rocks that you can have in many different uh, positions. Which is why I recommend detailing like equally over the entire rock. It's, it's pretty smart to do. Let me turn off the alpha a bit. Get back my very destructive one. tired of the square shape sometimes. And this is mostly what it is from the start unless when you go into detailing later on then you'll go into some more. Complex. Uh, well not complex but you go back to the basic brushes basically you use the clay build up and the damn standard brush and we're gonna get into the detailing later. I don't know how long I want to go for maybe 45 minutes or an hour and we'll see how far we get with our rock at that point. And I want the, I want the alpha back. Like so. Now this brush is just perfect for this kind of stuff. It's kind of like, almost seems like it was made for making rocks. Uh, 
just touching the surface with it just works its magic with the rock. And whenever you make some really deep insertions and really deep cuts, that's when you want to remesh uh, before you start before you start going on the edge here. Like you see, I just made a really deep insertion here. And going on the edge here makes it a bit weird, so if I remesh, it means I can go on the edge just fine. Even though my resolution is not too high right now, it's like 312, so... Um, going higher with Dynamis resolution there. It's not necessary, but could be useful. If you want to start detailing, you're going to have to up it, but at that point you might as well just divide because uh, you're not changing the basic shape anymore so and divide will stay more efficient in the system uh, it'll be easier to rotate around and work on the model when it's divided instead of just dynamesh that is massive resolution so keeping dynamesh low has its benefits uh, see there I should have uh, remeshed but I didn't so I got some ugly shapes I'm really like cutting away at the rock is the important part because eventually, well, what happens to a lot of people is that they they just get this rock with a bunch of flat faces and they don't get get any indents or like cuts in or deep cuts because they don't want to be. It looks unnatural at first to them, but they don't really realize that it's actually the way it is. So some sometimes I just open with my move brush again and I start to kind of like distort uh, what I've been working on a bit, which uh, can be useful. It can also kind of muddy up your sculpt a bit though, so don't do too much. Uh, because if, if you uh, move everything around, you know, you start curving this flat surfaces that you work so hard to make. Okay, so you cut Cut in here, real deep, remesh, and then flatten those edges and jumble them up a bit. Another remesh there. Yeah. And making rocks is. God, I made many rocks. When we we had a a game project when I went to uh, when I went to school learning about game design, and I made so many rocks, but. <laughs> They weren't really useful in the end, which felt like kind of like a waste. But I guess it's not a complete waste because I know how to make fast rocks now. Well, not fast, I don't know. I guess you could always use like tele photo telemetry for rocks, which is kind of the best way right now. But it, and you need a good camera and you need to get out there and take pictures and process is similar in uh, in time spent uh, to sculpting one in my opinion at least so far but you the result you get with uh, the photo telemetry is obviously very 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 good and it's hard to get with with sculpting but you can get something close and uh, Sometimes you want to direct, uh, direct it a bit more, but which you can also always just like uh, rework the telemetry model. But at that point, you might as well just sculpt it uh, and use some of some alphas and stuff to get the surface feeling right. I don't know. I think like, it depends a lot on the sculptor. Uh, And you can get some good rocks with sculpting, I think. Well, some good enough rocks. Like I said, it depends on what you want to use it for. If you want to go for like ultra realism, then maybe you should go for ultra realism and go and capture realism with a 
camera or scanner. Or... But I don't really have a really expensive camera that can capture noise free images at these um, high apertures and stuff. Which is kind of what, like what you need. And you need perfect weather. Con oh, I fucking hate that. And you kind of need perfect weather conditions and everything as well. Like you cannot have any sun. It needs to be overcast sky with a lot of brightness. So it needs to be a specific time of day. And you need to avoid shadows. And it can't be raining because then you get reflections and stuff. So you kind of want to... It's hard to get the perfect uh, scenarios. Hard, but not po impossible, of course. I mean, a lot of people do photo telemetry, and you can do it with sunlight, but you need to clean up. And and sometimes, if you if the model is supposed to be be in one position, it doesn't really matter all that much if it's not very interactive lighting. It moves or anything. But in games, you usually have like interactive lighting everywhere. That kind of makes it. Um, required to have all the lighting data taken out of the phototelemetry. And at that point, you kind of want to, might want to stick with Sculptic. Our rock. Like I said, it depends. Now, at this point, you have some choices. Um, kind of got started a bit of a rocky shape. Sometimes I like to um, duplicate and <laughs> that my friends are getting all funny with their Facebook chat. And I like to duplicate And scale and rotate and move stuff around. In order to get some more interesting shapes. But you don't want to do it like this. You see what I've done here now? You see this piece and this and this very recognizable. So you want to rotate them. This one as well. Move it a bit. Rotate it. But move it in a position that makes sense. Yeah, like so. And I'm going to duplicate again. And I'm going to scale it down. Hmm. Move it like so. And duplicate again. Rotate it a bit. Scale it a bit. Move it back in place. Fine, when you got a rock that you like, uh, you usually I just merge visibles. And that'll make a new tool up here. Like it'll take all of these and it'll make a new tool which is called merged, whatever name you had before. And then we go to geometry and we turn our dynamesh up to a little bit more than what we had before. 
So 408, turn off project and blur and redynamesh. And that'll preserve most of our detail and it'll merge all of these together into one mesh. So you uh, won't have any problems with that. And at this point is really where I start to like not be so rough with my um, with my smooth border brush, and I'll t turn off the uh, alpha maybe a bit, and I'll try to like find shapes that I that I think look real or that I think that I like. Um, Especially in between uh, the rocks that I put together. Like, this sticking out doesn't look right to me. I mean, it just it looks a bit weird uh, for some reason. And remeshing at this resolution is not great, but I'm going to have to. Well, it seems to work fine. It goes a bit slower when I'm recording, so I kind of wanted to avoid that. And here we have the same problem. I think I'm going to turn back on the the alpha. It just looks too like mechanical to me when it's got this sort of shape. There's no ruffling in the cracks or anything. I mean, it happens in nature as well, but I I don't know. I'm not I'm not going to say it's rare even. It probably happens often, but uh, it catches my eye a bit too much and makes it feel like non-authentic, uh, like at all. So now I'm kind of like looking, I'm just looking for shapes. And especially around these edges, because uh, they kind of stick out as, oh, that's a clump that just stuck onto the other clump. And that makes me... Uh, Think that I don't I don't want it exactly like that. Sometimes I blur it. Sometimes I keep it the way it is. But I just cr try to create noise around these clumps. Um, and often it's nice to use the clay buildup brush between them as well. But maybe you don't want to remove all of them. I mean, some of them make a nice. Uh, crease like this one I thought I made a nice like crease and in, in that case you can even like enhance the crease a bit like a, it's a crack and uh, you can use the slash brush but maybe uh, with a lower intensity and kind of like push it push it in a bit and then come over with the smooth border brush Without the alpha, with a small, like, like so. And at this point is where you can really like start wasting time. Uh, I can get, you can get into this sculpting rocks like this and just get stuck here forever basically and not get anywhere because so much detailing you can do with a rock and I wanted to keep this within an hour an hour rock so I don't wanna go on forever I think I'm gonna go 10 minutes more and then we'll go into surfacing like the surface details, try to cover how you can make cracks and stuff and cr 
cracks uh, are important for rocks. They like to crack. Some big cracks, some small cracks we're going to make, but first I'm just going to muddy, muddy the model a bit. Let's go back to the mallet. I haven't used it in a while. And that's a really thing that I like to do is just try to mix up the between these different brushes that you use. Like even though you can do everything with one of the brushes, they all kind of leave their own little signature uh, on the model. And if you uh, like that looks way too non-organic. Um, if you keep just using one. Um, It, you get this kind of samey feel, samey feel. Like this feels a bit samey because I've mostly used the trim smooth border, and I've and I've been sort of haphazardly just bashing around. But yeah, it's just a tip for me, from me, for you to use. Do as I say, not as I do. I guess. Uh, Try to use different brushes to get different shapes, uh, even though they all kind of do the same thing, flatten out an area. They're nice too. Some of them dig in a bit, and you can always use them in, in a reverse as well, like holding down Alt will make it not push stuff out, well it kind of pushes stuff out at the edges. Instead of making a smooth border, it'll make a jagged border, which uh, sometimes you, you want a jagged border. And like, the, like I said, detailing a rock like this can take three, maybe four hours, depending on what kind of detail you want. And yeah, I'm not gonna like I said, I'm not gonna go all, all the way in that. It's mostly just to show the technique that I use. So I'm probably gonna really detail one area so you can get the feel of it there. And it's also a bit hard to be, for me at least, to be inspired when you're making uh, rocks like this. Um, this is not all that interesting. Like when I make uh, characters and stuff, I get inspired and I see easily like what I want to do. But here it's kind of hard to get inspired because it's just a rock. But some people have the what I like to call a rock fetish when they see a CG rock and they'll be like, oh, look at that, it's so gorgeously detailed and rendered nicely rock. Which I'm not going to lie, I mean, I find really nice rocks pleasing as well to have in my games or whatever. Well, it's not. It's kind of a background thing. You don't really notice when you're in in a game or if it's an animation. But when you see people's rock work on the outside, I really like. I really like to study their rock work and see what they might have done different. Digging about. This is where you can start using like your damn standard brush with a very small focal shift. And uh, crease out some edges. Uh, 
And as you can see at this point, you kind of want to get higher resolution. So remesh once. Um, yeah, remesh once. And then you can use a clay polish over here. Could give you some good shapes. You might have to adjust it a bit. It turn it down a little bit. Yeah, that's a nice clay polish if you like. So and, and check the wireframe. And I was, not always, but I usually remesh after my clay polish because it moves the geometry a bit too much. And then we divide. So now we have nice topology to work with when we're going to make our cracks. And, And what I'm using now is, is just the damn standard brush. You can even use the uh, clay buildup brush. Works surprisingly well for this if you hold the alternate button. And changing the uh, the alpha also help with the clay buildup brush. It's not so strong though. Because what it does is that it will just dig in, it won't pinch. And pinching is not too great uh, in rocks. They don't, they don't really pinch all that nicely. <laughs> but sometimes you can, you know, the damp standard doesn't ruin it. Uh, it just makes a bit of a softer curve, in my opinion, than the clay buildup brush. can ruin it a bit. Yeah, sometimes you need more resolution than this even. But I'm not going to divide it again on this uh, recording, I don't think. It will be very high. Slash tool can be used. However, it has a very high intensity from the beginning. And you'll have to end up your crack somewhere, so you can just. I often bring it away from a ledge like that. And kind of just bring it to a halt. And find a new place to crack up. And don't make cracks everywhere like I'm kind of doing now. Just uh, have a few cracks here and there. Too many cracks will make it look very artificial and uniform. Changing the materials are always nice. This is something that might be different than the one you were originally using. Just to look at it. Like this one is often nice. Because you can see the 
the details very easily with this one. Although I like it more for folds than for rocks. It kind of distracts you a bit, I feel. So I turn down the cavity section a little bit. So it will mostly just leave you with the rock and some slight detection. And at this point, it's really more the same as before. You know you kind of got your rock shape now. It looks like a rock. It's just not as detailed as one. So you really just got to go in and increase the resolution and just nibble away at it to make it more interesting and now you can really like kind of make out features instead of just being like I did in the beginning it was very like random you know I just like bounced my brush around a lot but at this point you you kind of want to start and build features I think it's the best it's the best way for me to put it like you want to like make ridges uh, that go parallel or partially parallel to each other kind of figure out what the structure of the rock would be and this is where like um, this is where your reference really comes into good use I keep turning the alpha off because I think I'll get an easy result but Seems like the alpha is helping out a lot. And I mean, some for some people, <laughs> this is like their job to just make rocks. And I'm sure they like it, but for me, uh, I don't want to be doing this forever. But be aware of what you post and stuff. And, and if all you do is post rocks, most likely going to be doing rocks or environmental art but uh, I'm, I'm posting this so you can learn how to make rocks if you ever come across the situation and using the clay build up brush as well to kind of um, further enforce your uh, your features that you're making it's very smart at this point not only use the smooth boiler brush but use the more common brushes that you use for sculpting other stuff also like the trim dynamic and that uh, the H polish brush is also very good for this this portion And you can use the reverse of the clay build up brush to dig in a little bit of a feature. And then on the upper side of it, you do a bit positive, then you give it a bit of a smooth, then you bring in the smooth border again, do one on the downside and one on the upside, very softly on the upside. Though. Actually, on the upside, you might want to use the H polish instead. Well, it all depends on the shape you want, of course. And maybe I'll do a second part for this one. Second part video. Um, since detailing is kind of its own thing and the same thing at the same time, I don't know. I don't want to be 
boring you the shit out of you just by looking at me detailing a rock. <laughs> That's the kind of stuff that I would never watch for a tutorial. I would just watch like him get the initial idea. And maybe I'll just time lapse the rest of the detailing. Uh, so you can see what the result will look like. Yeah, maybe that's an idea. But you can kind of see where I'm getting at. Let's. How much is that? No, if I divide, it's gonna be 16 million. Oh, well, 16 million should be fine. Yeah. Okay. 19 million points. All right. Maybe I miscalculated somehow. Well, that was a bit extra, I guess. Keep the shapes. Something I'm really bad at. And at this point, I really want to save because at this point, I fuck up and it crashes. And at this point, you can also see that dividing is a really good thing because it'll like down res it while you're rotating. Yeah, and I should really work in a lower subdivision level. This really high subdivision level makes it so that I can't undo. And at this point, I like to undo. And I seem to like use too much strength on my brush, so I re reduce my brush strength a little bit. Maybe I won't have to undo as much. And you might want to, if you want to get into the super detailing at this point, you might want to split your model in pieces. Um, it's kind of the same thing you do to print it. Just cut it along the middle or maybe in three pieces if you want. Oh no. No, don't crash on me, please. Oh, great. Yeah. I just saved anyway, so it doesn't matter. See, and that's why I save. Because that shit happens. I'm going to load. My, where was it? Where was it? There it was. Merged poly loads it up. Go back into edit mode. And I really don't like the red wax for this. So now I have to reload my uh, brush from trim, smooth border. I don't use smooth border a lot, so I don't have it on startup. Probably should have it on startup, but I only use it for rocks, and I don't make rocks all that often. Yeah. 
Yeah, I should split my model. I don't want to. It's a lot of extra work. Not really worth it. Because when you split your model, you don't, uh, it's not so like slow to work with. All right, at this resolution I can, but it's a bit low. It's a bit too low for me. Rocks need a lot of resolution to get all the detail in, surprisingly. And there's really no point on like Z mirror meshing it either, uh, before you're gonna take it out, because there is no like flow, edge flow, or anything that'll make this uh, divide subdivide more efficiently than the dynamesh subdividing. So there's really no point whatsoever. To uh, uh, see remission it. But yeah, I usually decimate it in the end. Another trick I like to use is. You see these ridges that I tr kind of define that go down here? If I don't think they're defined enough, I'll use the damn standard brush and I'll make it really big. And I'll just kind of use it alongside. Maybe my stroke is a bit weird. Yeah, I'll turn off laser mask. And I'll use on the up ridge, I'll use the alternate, but you gotta keep it on the edge. And you gotta keep keep your brush big, yeah. And this is stuff that you just got to clean up afterwards. Make it look nice. Alright, so I think I'm going to stop it there. Maybe, I'm saying maybe, I'm, uh, don't hold me to it, but maybe I'll release a time-lapse video of me doing the entire rock from start to finish so you can see what it looks like when the entire rock is detailed. All right. The final thing I'm going to put you with is when you kind of have your surface, when you kind of have your uh, general shape, you uh, feel like you're happy with your features, you feel like you're happy with your cracks. I usually go down to the surface here and I apply some noise to it. Keep in mind, um, Resolution. Splitting up your model is very smart to do before this. Not like I have done. Now, you might want to do this a little bit before you do your final detailing. Because it'll, un unless you want to mask, but it'll rough up your entire surface. And maybe you want to play around a bit with the noise, play with the curve, makes orange skin, maybe add another point. Yeah, no, 
Now, to me, that ma it makes it look like concrete more than anything, really. So just having a straight curve usually turns out the best. Like so. And when you apply it to the mesh, it takes a bit of time. Sometimes it crashes. Sometimes it turns out like this. And it'll rough up every surface, so you kind of have to go over it again in the places where you wanted the uh, where you wanted like clean cracks and stuff. So that's the thing to keep in mind. Like you might want to do it first or you might not want to do it at all. It depends on what kind of detail you're going for. But sometimes it's nice to have these clean surfaces, but rocks are rarely like that. Even when they're like broken off, super clean, usually have some kind of roughness to them on the inside. So I'm going to take it away. If it will go away without crashing. We're at 56 minutes now, almost 57. So I think I'm going to leave you with that. I'm going to say thank you guys for watching. Hopefully you'll stick around for some other videos. And hopefully, if you have any questions, you can ask me on my Facebook page or on the comments below, whichever you feel uh, comfortable with. Yeah. So, uh, maybe I'll undo this. There's a lot of undo steps. Come on, man. Don't be that slow. Yeah, this is the reason why you want to split up your model into pieces. So you don't have to do this stuff. There. We are back to our regular model. Alright, thanks again.